I got this beautiful dollhouse stuff from an old lady, but in it was an old newspaper, which I found very interesting. It's the newspaper, July 7, 1989. Factory worker, 9 to $15 an hour. General labor, tw 10 to $12 an hour. That is the exact wage that it currently is now. So it's when you see real world, real life examples like this that you can really get a full perspective of how much the middle class really has been screwed and robbed blind. I mean, I was born in 92. That newspaper clipping's three years older than me. I'm 30 years old. I'm a young man, but I'm not a kid. And in that entire time and before that, as we know, wages have been stagnant. Meanwhile, we look at, you know, corporate buybacks after corporate buybacks. We look at tax break after tax break for the people who need it the least. And we look at factories continuing to get shipped overseas. We look at all these tangible pieces of evidence that show how wealth has been transferred out of the middle class. And yet there's still some type of argument that these people at the very top of society somehow just earn their place there. Check this out, right? Inflation is currently running at 5.1%, but wages are only going up by 2.3% which means in real terms, you've had a pay cut of around 3%. We've seen the continuous costs of rising and living and on this channel and all across TYT's channels, we've covered the rising cost of rent in cities like New York, all over California, Chicago, Texas, all over the country. And meanwhile, that always just seems to be like something that we just have to do something about. However, the arguments for, oh, let's say eliminating student loan debt will be, well, look at inflation now. If we just give people a whole bunch more money, it'll only get worse because then they'll you know, put all their dollars into the market. Conveniently, it's, you know, anytime there's an opportunity to do something for the middle class, for the hardest working people in the country who hold the country up, it, 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 there always just seems to conveniently be some reason why we can't do it. However, you know, while the wealthiest among us get wealthier and wealthier and wealthier simply because they own this asset that asset, and that asset, and this asset, you know, that's totally cool. It's almost as if the working class just simply doesn't matter and nothing that any of us go through really holds any weight. I mean, the Democrats and Joe Biden can't even get Build Back Better passed, all because of people like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, who, of course, if there wasn't so much corruption within the system, first and foremost, they wouldn't even be in office. And secondly, uh, their terms wouldn't have any, well, Joe Manchin specifically, because he's been in office for quite some time, but his terms wouldn't have extended out for as long as they have, because these people are very easy to torch politically. You just tell the public what's going on and you show them a better way. However, we know that Joe Biden isn't really on board for things like eliminating student loan debt because he's one of the biggest reasons why it's so bad now. We know that the Democratic Party isn't really on board for making college and health care accessible because they're totally hyper focused on Obamacare, you know, reining in Obama's legacy and keeping that the main focus. Meanwhile, the country continues to burn. So I thought that this was a great, uh, you know, newspaper clipping because it really does show that, you know, in a lot of instances, hard work does not lead to better circumstances.